Just fucking do it. Let's fucking go. Ahem. Mm. <clears throat> let, me, let me get the character. <clears throat> Welcome to Vault Crashers, a show dedicated to kicking down the vault door to help you find something that you'll fall in love with. Our mission, our creed, and our code is this to share our passion for vault comics in a way that makes them approachable and accessible to everyone. We want you to find a comic book or graphic novel that you'll fall in love with. My name's Dan and my pronouns are he, him. My name is Nikki and my pronouns are they, them. My name's Adair and my pronouns are she, her. Vault Comics, in case you didn't know, was founded in 2016 and is based in Missoula, Montana. They publish creator-owned horror, fantasy, and sci-fi comics and graphic novels. And they have an imprint called Wonderbound for middle grade and young adult readers, as well as a few more things in the works. Vault Crashers is dedicated to showcasing at least one vault title, a first issue, or maybe an arc uh, wrap-up each month and we will hype whatever news is going on we will also we are also going to drink our drinks are going to somehow be tied into whatever it is we are discussing and with that said what is it we are getting into this month so what we're going to do this month um we're going to be celebrating db andry david db andry who is just the coolest dude uh he's written several titles for vault um Really, my love for him started with Resonant, which I don't remember when it was originally released, but Volume 1 and Volume 2 are available at bookstores anywhere, wherever you can get your comics. Uh, and the art on that is Skylar Patridge, Jason Wordy that does the colors, letters by Darren Bennett. Um, and he also co-wrote End After End with Tim Daniel. And when we get to the interview, we're going to have some great, some great and inside information on uh, the co-writing process with Tim. And the art on that is by Sonando C, colors by Kurt Michael Russell, letters by Jim Campbell. And then there's Denizen, which is part of the Nightfall double feature, co-written with Tim Daniel, art by Chris Sheehan, who is uh, just chef's kiss, colors by Jason Wardy, and letters by Jim Campbell. So one note, uh, Alejandro Aragon did the first volume of Resonance Art, and then it switched to Skylar. Ah, so thank you. Issue six That's right. on is Skylar. Yeah, whenever issue six is the where they beach. switch to volume two. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have to find a drink that works with them. So who wants to go first and share what their drink is? You know, you know what I've got. I'm drinking a Miller High Life. Now the reason uh for the book is uh yeah, Miller High Life, champagne <laughs> of beer. <laughs> Well, I just went with the beach theme, as is my background. I went with a canned cocktail. It's an agave paloma. How is it? It's an agave paloma from a can. What um, the hell is a paloma? Uh, it's got like grapefruit. It's oh. and yeah, it's like it's um. What's funny is actually my husband made me palomas on our first date. It's like tequila and grapefruit it's when great. he made it did you did you say palomia i barely even know you or no, did you no say i that? said i said i think i should go um <laughs> but it was because i was it was because i was eating gorditas and i thought i looked ridiculous eating gorditas and he thought i was not interested in him so that is the story of how i met my husband um but uh yeah ninkasi brewing does uh canned cocktails they're an organ brewer and so i did mm. that in this glass and i will drink it and i will probably and i also have um pedialyte in a water bottle because if you cannot tell i am sick but You're my voice is like drinking my, pedialyte well it's like i'm supposed to be hydrating just to like get uh, to keep from coughing um so yeah that's uh, Nikki can attest to. I sounded much worse like two days ago, but I have not spoken in like two days. It was rough, but yep. but she's it's here been, with her pediolite. It's been rough for you because I can't respond to your messages with no. words. <laughs> well, no, you just do like facial expressions. Um, it was great. They're, they're um, money. I am drinking red wine out of a camp coffee mug. Um, Respect. <laughs> because. Uh, 
resonant is post-apocalyptic. And um, if I lived past the apocalypse, the first thing I would do is ferment some fruit so I can drink. And then there's like a camper van in Denizen. So I felt like that would oh, all go great, together. Yeah, this was going to be, this was going to be um, moonshine. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I asked somebody at the last minute what it should be. And they went with wine and they don't know what it was for. So um, yeah. You know, sometimes people lead us astray, but I call camper, camp, camping mug wine just a Friday. So yeah. that sounds great. It's um, it's pretty good. Just that's uh, good. Feels kind of wrong out of a camping mug, but I don't know. If I was living through the apocalypse, if it's wrong, I don't want to be right. Yeah, at that point, I'd like I'd probably be a cannibal at that point. So it just you would. I would. Yeah, I really would. Um. Anyway, what are we doing? Um, we have an interview. But. Fuck if I know. Um, I feel like we haven't done this in a while. I know. Has anything inter bit. has anything interesting happened to anyone since we last recorded? No, <laughs> nothing interesting here. Dan. <clears throat> Dan, <I> anything got... <laughs> interesting happened? <laughs> I got engaged. It's pretty big. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Pretty big, pretty big life step. Yeah, and major uh, congrats. Thank you. We're very happy for, think... for you and I... your paramour. I'm glad that, that came. Like, I'm glad that that was the first thing that came to my mind. You're like, <laughs> I just myself. interviewed so and so. No, Dan. No. I would have edited that out and been like, no, keep saying. I am thrilled right to thing. announce I'm engaged. Yeah, that's that's the big one. That's the big one for me right now. Um, for now. Yeah, until next big interview. <laughs> Your poor fiance. <laughs> <Beyonce. laughs> she she like only hears her come through the door like. Just like straight through it. No, like the uh, your screen goes black and it's like, all yeah. right. <laughs> Guess it's just me and Nikki again. Yeah. All right. Da -da, Apologies da -da, da -da. for that. Well, guys, what else? What what is the psychotic thing that that was decided on for this particular podcast? It's not listen, it's nothing bad. So is it is this are, are people gonna be watching this after they come back from the interview? Um, well, let's go into the interview and then let's do yes. this. Then they, then they can see what happened. Okay. Yeah. So like tune into this interview there. I don't think there's any spoilers and uh, some weird shit's about to happen. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so, come, so come back. If the just, interview sucks, I'm very sorry. It wasn't it, DB's fault. It was mine. It was, it was our fault. <laughs> it was ours. We derailed that shit hard. Yeah. No, it that was, was a pretty good interview. That was a well, lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks um, for the passive aggressive compliment. Yeah, thanks. I'll uh, I'll take it. Well, you um, you have to put down yourself. I gotta lift it up a little bit. I can't get you getting. But like, but he can't I let our stuff. egos get too yeah, high because yeah. if that happens, we'll take over. Anyway, well, if you want to hear DB's hot take on hot dogs, listen to the interview. It is the most brilliant thing. It is, it is so fucking it's brilliant. great like that is 90 percent of the interview um and you really need to know and hear it and be proven wrong or right uh, depending on where you stand on hot dogs anyway enjoy the interview welcome i'm here with david db andre and i am so excited on a saturday morning thank you for joining us if you don't know who he is where have you been you're having a year like, uh, yeah it's not too not too shabby you know not too shabby. Uh, yeah. Resonant um, got picked up for a show, mm -hmm. and End After End is fantastic. It's amazing. Then we have Denison. Yes. But then there's also the big news that your chickens are having chickens. Um, yes, my chickens are having chickens. Like I'm very excited for you on that. But <laughs> here is the first question, and it's legally required if we're going to ask a question with gate crashers. What is your favorite sandwich? Oh, my. It's a hot dog. No, wait. Uh, <laughs> dang it. I'm so uh, sorry for the audio you're meant to have for that. <laughs> uh, there's actually a place in Sacramento called uh, Ike's Love and Sandwiches. And I think they're a small chain um, uh, on the West Coast. And they might be in Hawaii, too. And each location has like a signature sandwich. And I think the one in Sacramento is this fried chicken sandwich with like um this kind of golden barbecue sauce and jalapenos and it's 
the best freaking sandwich like ever and i make myself sick by eating the whole thing because it's way too big it's like a ridiculously huge sandwich uh yeah that is my number one and i will do it on special occasions only <laughs> and it's not a hot dog it's not a hot dog and you would not mistake it for a hot dog if someone put it in your mouth with your eyes closed <laughs> yeah that would be real that would be fun um yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to be thinking about like hot dogs and closing my eyes. I really later. want a hot dog now. Um, I don't think that was the desired effect of this whole situation. No, no, I don't think I'm right. I'm not going to be ready to eat a hot dog for a long time. I come from I, my in-laws are a big hot dog eating family. So when I go to the East Coast in general, there is they a eat hot big dog. hot dogs. Yeah, they they're uh the grandparents of the family they they're like one of their first dates was at i think hiram's hot dogs okay. um which is a like institution over there so so yeah that's uh that's what i yeah. get to uh do for my <laughs> holidays do they also serve sandwiches at hiram's hot dogs no they do not okay then the hot they dog's do not. not a sandwich there you go <laughs> settled you heard it that is first. actually that's the that's the most clear logic i've ever seen on that right. argument honestly right. That is genius. I will right. be using that. I will I will credit you and then I will text you immediately okay. and say, like, I did it. I did the thing. Please be proud of me. I'm so glad we settled that here. Right. Like on the show. Honestly, like, that 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 logic just kills the argument dead. Yep. No, we got it handled. The three of us in agreement. Yep, we figured it yep. out. Um, yeah, and that's the whole interview. That's it. Yeah, uh, thank you. Go. All right, thank you no so much. No opinions allowed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to hear from the other side. <laughs> we're not hearing from Pro Hot Dog Sandwich today. No, they they were not available for comment. <laughs> we are not supported by Big Sandwich. We are not. Um, they're also not available for comment. Uh, and to ask you, you have Denizen coming out uh, currently, and you have End After End. What is next for you? Well, what can be, here's the fun thing about comics. You can't like announce anything until it gets announced. Uh, <laughs> that is true. But that is yes. true. Are you, are so, you, are, so you're still though, uh, it's going to be comics and you're not yeah. doing any self-publishing right now. Um, I am doing some self-publishing right now. So my, um, so when I first started getting the idea that I wanted to do comics, um, a friend of mine who worked at the time at a local comic book shop, big brother here in Sacramento, uh, Christopher Alvarez, um, him and his now wife and me formed this little three-person collective called Ghost Thunder. And we would do cons together. So we'd share table costs and travel costs. And so it made it easier to do a con if you aren't sitting there by yourself at a table really lonely for eight hours selling two of your self-published comics, which is a pretty normal day. Uh, so um, me and Chris have continued to work together um, since, you know, for, I think, seven eight years now um and so we're putting out a, a our homage to 90s comics uh which is all big guns and pouches and just over the top stuff uh called dead blood uh mm -hmm. we're gonna self-publish that and Catchy name. Do, yeah do a little print run of that ourselves and and just sell it at, at cons and probably do a couple little online sales for it and we've already um we already did a little ash can and sold that and uh, chris did a bunch of uh, sketches on the covers and yeah it's coming out really great we're gonna try to do like a chromium cover and it's gonna be ridiculous that'll, that'll come out for sure uh at the beginning of next year we'll have that out and ready to go yeah. that's exciting yeah and then other things that you can't talk about are coming out yeah there you know <laughs> we have um me and tim daniel formed a kind of a writing partnership and and that's where kind of end after end came from and and denizen came from which is part of the nightfall double feature um and so we have uh you know under contract i think five books for next year at least um and possibility of probably up to maybe eight or nine things so we're 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 casting a wide net and trying to capture more readers um, next year. Uh, so hopefully, looking for us to branch out. 
And that's kind of the, the hints that I'll make on that. Yeah. And it's interesting <laughs> you bring up Tim because we do actually, yeah. uh, we, we have a little, uh, so this is, this is to quote Nikki there due to the parasocial no nature of Twitter, you have what we would call a bromance and oh, yeah. from the outside, it seems like quite the idyllic collaborative effort. Um, but we were just curious, you know, how, because writing is such a collaborative process and you and Tim Daniel are working so much together, like, what is it like to collaborate with another writer in, this, in a project? And what's this process like for you and Tim, since you are creating so much together? Yeah, it, me and Tim are a perfect marriage. It's like, if we were a married couple, we'd make everybody else sick. <laughs> okay because <laughs> there's like no conflict there's no I mean we're totally open and honest with each other which I think is important because when we write um we're trying to delve into some like serious emotional personal stuff and we're trying to put as much of that out into the page as can so you have to be really open and vulnerable and it is like a relationship and and you know, if you don't have that trust that I'm going to tell this person this thing that I've probably never told anybody else before, and he's going to, you know, be precious about that and not share that. And um, you really, we can't get to the level that we wanted to get to unless we had that type of trust. And so, you know, Tim and I have been friends for, you know, 11, 12 years, and he's always been super supportive of, you know, my writing and, for some reason during the pandemic, he just said, hey, let's do something together. And I'm like, of course, I'm not an idiot. You know, um, this guy's like, you know, one of the best creative minds out there. Uh, and, you know, why wouldn't I want to harness some of his creative energy? Um, and it, it was a little bit of a nerve, like very like nervous kind of <laughs> first date, I would say on that uh, first phone call that we had, we're kind of feeling each other out and I decided to just kind of lean in and go for it and uh <laughs> and and it turns out the things that he's really good at I'm not so great at and and the things that he might struggle with I'm really good at and so we kind of fit together to make like a you know a Voltron of of writer um because Tim has a thousand ideas and it's you know and he's it, sometimes it's hard for him to select which one he's going to go with because he loves them all and I'm pretty good at going I like this idea and moving forward on it and so um he'll just I call him the machine gun of ideas because I'll get on the phone I'm like Tim what should we do about this part right here he's like well, we can do this or this or this or this or this and I'm like that one okay thanks Tim you know <laughs> and even in our writing process Tim is very detail oriented um he he's very thoughtful about what each scene is going to do going forward and going back and I'm very slapdash I'm like whatever this is going to happen and then this and then this and cool that's fun let's go this way and uh so it's really easy for me once we kind of talk through an idea and we'll always talk through the idea kind of as as thoroughly as we can or as we need to and then I'll sit down and do a first draft and I can bust out that first draft really really quick because again I don't I'm not that of a I'm not that much of a thoughtful person, I guess. I'm not like, oh gosh, I wonder if this what should happen here. You know, I just kind of like go for it, and uh, and then you know, I described it to Tim. My process of writing is jumping out of an airplane with all the parts of a parachute and seeing if I can knit it together before I crash on the ground. And so, uh, yeah, so I'll do I'll do a first draft and send it to him, and he'll pick it. Not you know, he'll pick all the parts that he likes, expand on things, you know, move things in different directions if it needs to. And so he takes basically the kind of the garbage that I give him and makes it into this beautiful thing. And then he sends it back to me and I'll script it. And again, he'll take this kind of rough and ready kind of script and turn it into something beautiful. So it allows us to both be doing our favorite part all the time. And it also allows us to be way more productive than you would be on your own because you don't have to stop and struggle at the stop stuff that you're hard with that you have a hard time with. You just hand it off to the other person. He's like, "Oh yeah, cool. I like this part. I'll do this part for you." So yeah, it's really we 
from end after end, from the very first script we worked on, we fell into this pattern without even formalizing this pattern. And then after, you know, about six months or a year, we're like, this is really working. Let's keep going like this. And it's just worked like amazingly well. Like we've been super productive and super creative. And uh, we, we had an opportunity um, last week to pitch uh, to a ongoing property. Um, and I'm like, I had like one idea. I'm like, I got this one idea, you know, and they wanted several pitches. I got this one idea. Tim's like, well, I thought of these six things and maybe seven. I'm like, great, <laughs> sweet. Phew. So I'm like, like banging my head against the wall going, I need more ideas. And they're like, my brain's like, nope, you get one. I'm like, okay. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just like having help. You know, it's like having someone to like pick up the slack for you. It's like a, just like any kind of like other partnership or relationship. You don't have to do everything by yourself. And it's, yeah, it would be really hard for me to go back to like solo writing. Like if I went back to solo writing, I would still call Tim and say, hey, Tim, what do you think I should do about this? And he would be totally generous with all his ideas. And like, and, and he's always been like that. Like he'll help anybody with anything so yeah it's not just a bromance it's true love me and tim <laughs> y'all are forever. couples couples goals that right? is that oh is true. seriously yeah like like my significant other makes fun of me all the time that he goes oh go talk to tim about it i'm like <laughs> i'm going to <laughs> i'm the same way with my husband's writing partner i i'm like your other your other spouse <laughs> it i mean it, honestly it it is I, again because there's so much trust that's in like involved in that like I literally tell Tim I would tell Tim anything about like my past my history and not just the things that happened how it affected me emotionally and we use all of that we're going to use everything you know we're going to strip mine our our souls to put it into a comic book page which I don't know if the that is appreciated or not but that's the only way we can write you know it's the only way we can like have this mean something other than you know trying to get comics out you know it has to kind of have a little more meaning y'all are so good at hitting those emotional notes and I like I had a question like ready to go about how the stories you tell hit these like emotional beats and just pull at my heartstrings and I think that's one of the reasons I fall in love with them it's horror it's scary you know whatever the genre is even end after end is like you know it's fantasy but it's taking you on this emotional journey of like what is my purpose and then all of the commentary that is made isn't commentary it's like from the heart and you really really can tell um and so to hear you say it's like there's a lot of trust in the process you can feel that in the writing and in the comic and I personally absolutely love it I like being put in my feels okay yeah when I read a comic <laughs> like I want I want to cry of it in a good yeah, way when I too. read comics yeah yeah. yeah, I know if I'm crying when I'm writing it, then then hopefully I'm hitting some decent notes for people when they read it. You know, I know mm -hmm. that that comics tend to be, I don't know, read quick and kind of put away. Um, but the hope is, again, like for people who are just now discovering Resonant because it got picked up, they're like, oh, this was something that this it it has quality that can last. It can stand up over the test of time uh, because hopefully I got to someplace true with that. We talked about horror um, and, but also end after end is fantasy. Are there genres that you would love to play in more or that you are currently playing in, but you can't talk about? Um, well, Tim is always bringing me to horror and I'm, you know, never really considered myself a horror fan or a horror, you know, writer. Although I do like to have like scary elements in things like scary sci-fi you know, scary fantasy, stuff like that. Um, I love, I love fantasy. Uh, that is like <laughs> Tim's least favorite. So it's really hard to drag him in there. I kind of have to trick him that we're doing a fantasy. You know, I'm like, well, don't, don't think of it like a fantasy. Think of it like a war story. Like that's the end after end. It's war. It's yeah. not fantasy. Don't worry about the fantasy stuff. Um, but I'm also, again, not a detailed writer. Like not, I'm not doing six months of research before I start writing you know I, I want to get an idea and write 
And so that's why I kind of like fantasy and, um, you know, light sci-fi, not like heavy sci-fi because you can just kind of make up your own rules. I don't need to know how to warp engine really works or, you know, gravity coefficients on different planets. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't think it enhances my enjoyment of the story and I'm not going to, you know, come up with a bloodline that's 17 generations deep to find out who's the true wielder of the sword. So, and that's also why I don't do a lot of like, I'm not going to do like historical stuff, you know, because again, you need research. Uh, <laughs> so I, I like where I can kind of just jump in. So either something that's happening um, right now uh, or, you know, in, in maybe a little bit in the past. Um, Tim and I are working on our version of a romance book, a relationship, maybe a relationship book. It is got horror aspects too. Um, if you follow Tim, he tweeted a picture uh, a while back that if you, um, that is one of the things that we're working on um, that hasn't been pitched or picked up anywhere. Um, so we, you know, my first book was a relationship. My first series, my self-published series was a relationship drama. I did four, four books of just kind of relationship and people talking and stuff. Um, so I kind of, even though my, <laughs> if you read Resonant and even End After End, you'll notice there's not a ton of dialogue and not a ton of caption boxes because um, I like to keep that stuff light. Um, but I also like, you know, West Wing style, let's talk. The walk and, and talk. Just, yes, the whole walk and talk. I, so I uh, want to do a little bit more, maybe, maybe relationship. Um, romance i don't know i'm not that romantic of a person so maybe i don't maybe i'm not qualified but i, mean, I don't know uh, what you just were talking about with tim uh, yeah I, i'm just like what are you like, talking about i do want to do I, yeah, I do want to do a bromance book i want to do because i have really strong male friendships like i have friends that i can you know call up and say we need to bury a body and you know they will say how many shovels should i bring you know they're you know, I, I have those uh, because I don't have, you know, strong connections with my with my family like that. I, I have, you know, created my found family um, and I do have, you know, absolutely friends that, you know, would do whatever, you know, for me. And I, I have confidence in that and those relationships. So I, I would like to see like a bro on bro romance, but just bromance, just friendship and like, I don't know. I like, I like those relationships a lot uh, because I see them in my life and I don't tend to see them in, in fiction as much, you know, there's usually a, you know, a lot of conflict and, you know, distrust between male friends and I don't have that. It would be nice to see something like that sort of breaks down toxic masculinity and be like, look, like you can be vulnerable. Like two men right. can be vulnerable and it's a bromance. It's totally different. Just, I would love that. And, and a relationship horror is what I'm going to call it instead of romance, yes. because I'm not romantic <laughs> either. And I'm like, it's relationship horror. Yes. That's... It's, it's multiple relationships with a horror on top of it. Yeah. Perfect. I'm here yeah. for it. I'm sold. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just tell us when and where we will read that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, well, of course we will. Cause we are absolute fans and are so happy that you're hanging out with us. Yeah. Yay. We, we, uh, I feel the last time we were all in screen together was Emerald City when we, when That's I FaceTimed right. you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Cause we, DB and I spent two days together. That's pretty right. Much. We, we started Me out and as, there are just friends yeah. now. Just we, we've been friends. in the trenches of That's the right. booth. Yes. Yes. Once you've yeah. worked the booth together, that's a bond that never, that's where me and Tim started. And Tim oh. started at the Skybound booth. Yeah. If you ever want to yeah. see someone like slinging books, DB. Yeah, that's right. It's I just, sling, I sling hard. You do. I, I ain't there say, to mess around. I sling hard. All I do is sell. That's yeah, it. I love it. All you do is yeah. win as well. That's um, right. But one of my favorite memories actually is that someone came up and was like very drawn to your your book because there is a one of well one of the main characters if not the main character is disabled and just the idea of like it not being this like 
uh, not a, a crutch to her yeah. character. Like it was just, it was a thing that she, that, that like it was an element of who she right. was. It was nothing else. And yeah. they being a disabled person as well. And a creator in comics, like was very drawn to that and really appreciative of that. And I loved seeing that. And yeah. I feel like you bring in a whole new side of what, uh, what both strong women, but also people you aren't necessarily getting to see in that, like, that hero spotlight and i yeah. loved that that made me well it, it always drives me crazy um when you have a disabled person in tv or comics or books or whatever and they always either it's a constant joke about oh you know they call them skids or wheels or something like that because they're in a, a wheelchair or somehow their disability now becomes a, a power and they're like oh you know they they kind of like are, you know, the author's maybe trying to empower them, but shows their like disability as this super advantage, you know, because I didn't have a leg, you know, the, the sword missed where where my leg would have been and, or something silly. Um, So I, I wanted, and I, I'm, you know, I'm a physical therapist. So I see a lot of people with, you know, many problems and my younger brother is autistic. So I've, I've been around, you know, Uh, people with disabilities you know a lot and what you usually don't see is is the strength that they have to have just to get through the day and and that can translate to just mental strength and 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 just just a a more kind of unflappable durable person and so I wanted to demonstrate that with Beck and and that was the whole idea of her her disability didn't define her but it also affected her and made her into the person she is and if she can you know things aren't going to bug her as much as other people when you've been through what she's been through already um so yeah i really uh that's i think my favorite thing about resonant was creating her and then she her part was much smaller when I started writing that book and I, and I say it all the time, she kind of took over and said, nah, I'm going to do this. And, and really became my favorite, by the end, my favorite character to write the one I wanted to see on the page more than anything. And, you know, Paxson, who I thought was going to be like the hero and everything. I'm like, yeah, you're just some dude that's doing stuff. Let's get back to Beck. (laughs) Yeah. Let's leave this beach. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Absolutely love it. Well, I just want to say thank you so much um, for coming and hanging out on your Saturday yeah. morning. Yeah, of course. Anytime. I, if and you need help naming your chickens, we will name them. We yeah, we can put Aries. a poll out. Um, yeah, <laughs> or we can name your chickens. Like there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of chickens now. They just keep multiplying. Yeah. yeah. I love chickens. I love them so much. Like there's so much chicken stuff around my house, but I don't have any chickens and probably never will uh but yeah when i we appreciate buy a house we're getting chickens because yeah a couple a, a couple's not bad a couple's not bad a couple chickens is pretty easy yeah my husband is currently writing a musical and it is about chickens oh there you go nice it's about chickens very roughly it's about chickens who date and it's called chicken tenders um and yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's a thing. So, <laughs> so clearly, we all need to be best friends. That's right. <laughs> if just, you ever hear about a musical about chickens, I'll, I'm there. Trust me. Yeah, I, I I would not miss it for anything. Yeah, I, I think I need to come visit the West Coast just to hang out with all the chickens. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's goals right now. Just they are very friendly. If you go sit in the backyard, yeah. at least one or two chickens will jump on your lap. And really, okay. what more can you ask for, Nikki? I know. Right. I'm just like, all right, so uh, <laughs> I don't know when I'll make it out there. <laughs> but if you see me sitting in your backyard randomly. I will not be surprised. <laughs> not be like, oh, how... just... I feel like that's pretty par for the course for Nikki. We wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty chaotic over here. So, um, But yes, thank you so much for joining us and talking about chickens and dogs and not dogs. killing your animals and not killing animals yeah, yeah. and um, some comic stuff too yeah and and, there, and, and Tim, hot dogs as it should be and tim my true love we won't tell your partner <laughs> she knows it's okay, okay cool. <laughs> cool cool cool
All right. Well, thank you so much, TV. It was great getting to see you and hopefully we'll be seeing you at some cons soon. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping to get back to the con circuit. Well, there's there's so much to share there now. Like you've got so much. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I'm gonna stop the recording. Yeah, stop the recording. Yeah, stop the recording. This uh, is how I stop the recording every this time. This is how I just I just like just do something. Chaos and then I say, <laughs> All right, fine, I'm stopping. All right. All right. <laughs> We're gonna do this now. Yeah. Cool. All right, All right Dan. You, who's explaining Wait. this? What the fuck is going on? Um, I, let me scroll up into this conversation. So, was I the one who said it? You wanted Probably. it. You I said, was, "Are we eating bugs?" Yeah, and I said yes. So, and <laughs> and I, haven't... I complicitly agreed to this, and then bought all of them. I don't know why I did that. So in. Resonant, they eat bugs. I don't know if they're they don't like, really do they eat them or do they just use them to to track the waves? The one they said them. Eat them, doesn't he? Sorry, are we let's just say like spoilers now because I don't think there's any spoilers in the interview. So spoilers now. Yeah, spoilers. Um just, <laughs> this is the spoiler alert. Spoilers right now. anon. Do 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 spoilers. Yeah, we don't have a song for that, but that works. That's my song. Uh, do, 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 do. Spoilers. 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 It's perfect. I love it. And it's All like, right. we just wanted, he wanted chaos. I didn't say no. And then, can I, can I opt pressure. out since I'm sick? No. Oh, fuck. You're not, you're not not eating crickets sick. Can I, can I take no. my, my ca- can I turn my camera off for this? Oh, wait, to eat them? Okay, I'm going to say this. One of my professors back in the day before the pandemic, um, it was still an online class. I was sitting down yeah. to eat because the class was like at seven o'clock and I had my camera off and I'm like, sorry guys, I have my camera off. I'm eating. And my professor said, eating in front of other people is a very sexual experience and I was like and I'm definitely keeping my camera off I ho- was it a class about what? sex it was a class about um food and it had nothing to do with sex but she had just seen a lecture that compared eating um to sex as a very intimate experience because you're sharing and then she wanted me to describe what I was eating while right. I ate it and okay, it, so guys, we're not going to do that. We're not doing that, but you have to stay on camera because it's an orgy now. Um, there's an there's an orgy in Resonance, so this... yeah, there is at the uh, at the spiral. Yeah. So, which bugs are we eating, or which flavor of bugs are we eating first? Um, I'd say let's save salt and vinegar for last because that's my yeah. favorite flavor. So we've got sour cream and onion, or bacon and cheese. Where are we going for? Let's do bacon I, and honestly, cheese. I have eaten some horrible things. I drunk like four year old, not four year old, four month fermented jungle juice. I'm actually not ready for this, so I'm excited. Let's do bacon and cheese first. All right. Okay. Oh God! You can see their little wings. It's all it's all legs. Y'all have water ready? Yeah. Yeah. This is my fault. And yeah, this is your fault. All right. So for proof, here's a cricket. Oh God. (laughs) Here's a cricket. It's a bacon. Cheese cricket. Why are we like this? All right, uh, everyone, hold your cricket up. Yeah, cheers. To us, don't... damn few like us, and the rest of them are dead. Cheers. Oh, oh, it's so crunchy. Oh, oh it's so crunchy. I don't like the crunch. It's like it's dust. Oh, there's like a wing caught in the back of yeah, my throat. Yeah, there's a wing. <laughs> oh, it's in my throat. That doesn't taste like bacon and cheese. No, that just tastes like crunch. It It just tastes like like crunch. And listen, if you're on, if you're um, counting calories, uh, the whole container is only 4.3 and it's got 0.67 grams of protein, which isn't a lot. Oh, there's still a wing in my throat. (laughs) That Pedialyte will get it out. I'm just going to... Mm, Pedialyte and uh, crickets. I hate this. All right, so I we're. Hate, I hate everything. I, every choice I've made that's gotten me here. Sour cream and onion. Sour, uh, sour cream and onion. Yeah. Wait, Here's which one my... are you eating? That's sour cream and onion. Okay, yeah, I just tried that one. Oh, 
We're supposed you to do this it? together, Nikki. I thought you were putting it in your Nikki. mouth. I got hungry. Did another one. This just doesn't taste like shit. There's no taste. No taste. No okay. Maybe these are meant to be like eaten by the handful. And there's oh, like no. a flavor then. Oh, you guys want to eat all of this? The all, salt of the ones? all of the salt and vinegar ones in our palm. And then. No, uh, but this is my. My favorite of the flavors. I'm a big Same. salt and vinegar person. Salt and vinegar all the way. There's there's this big fella in here. Get the biggest one. No, I'm not, going, I'm not going. I'm not. Oh god, a wing got stuck in my throat again. <laughs> oh god, I hate this. No. Oh god, a... there's a massive one in here. Yeah, too. there's a massive one. I'm not eating him because I feel like he will he will find me in my dreams. Like, um, what's that's... your favorite chip flavor? Is it salt and vinies or are you? I'm yeah. a salt and vinny person. All the way. I'm salt and vinnies. Um, um, okay, hold on one second. One. Oh, Nikki, you, why big... are you this way? <laughs> why are you this way? You're putting um, us to shame. Actually, I my this one's pretty large. Are you? Right. You're doing all of them. No, in your mouth. no, damn. Don't uh, do it. Don't do it. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Okay, ready? All right. Set. Cheers. Oh, I actually can taste that one. That's not bad. Mm. It's not good. It's not good. Bro, now it's bad. It's like vinegary, but then it's like sour. Oh, it tastes like something went. Well, these are <laughs> good till these are good till July fifth, twenty twenty four. So we um. can continue with these later. <sighs> Oh All right, we did it. Oh, and that's stuck in my teeth. And, I that, need floss. and that's our podcast. That's it. Done. <laughs> uh, Actually, we're not doing this ever again. Yeah, I will never do that again. This is the last episode uh, because of that. I just got cricket. I have cricket pieces like, like I have down cricket my shirt. I, ha- I have a cricket. I have a cricket wing on my finger, and I can't get it off. All right, so we did that. That's we something that. we've been talking about for a good few weeks. Yeah, no, we planned that one like a month ago. I've literally had crickets just on my desk for a long time. Same, same. And they like knock them over from time to time. And yeah, like, and then I yeah. like just opened them right before this podcast too. I'm like, mm. all right, so we ate some crickets. Let's talk about resonant, the general plot there is that um, a decade ago the first waves unleashed humanity's worst impulse and the world plunged into chaos i actually think humanity's worst impulses and world plunged into chaos is us right now on this podcast um Mm -hmm. a single father has to resist the waves and he's created this oasis of peace for his children but something happens to his son and he must venture out and then more chaos ensues. That's where it starts. So let's talk about that. Oh, well, hold on. Sorry, I have to resonate myself. Give me a second. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to turn my camera off. Oh, well, all right. I guess. Well, like, bye, so Dan. Come back, with, like, come back with dramatic. Um... Yeah, just dramatic effects. Like, <clears throat> um, while we're waiting on that, we'll see what the editing does on this. This is going to be fun tomorrow. I'm going to have magic. A wine... I'm going to have a wine hangover. Orgy. Orgy. <laughs> Orgies. Um, I mean, what what comic? is uh, is really a comic without bloody nipples or an orgy um i don't want to <laughs> read that comic episode one bloody nipples episode <laughs> two orgies, orgies. Yeah, something i fun. loved in the interview with db that he was talking about was like how beck like originally did not start out as this like main character but like she really the more he wrote her the more she became that and similarly how he was talking about how he likes to give space and not like a ton of like speech per like per page like I think a lot of her actions and how she does things it is very physical and it's really cool to look at I was re rereading part of it uh the other day just to I it's been a it's been a few weeks since I last read it so I wanted to kind of re-familiarize myself and I just was really loving the different journeys that these you know the four members of this family specifically take and but like how it's they always kind of stay very specifically like who they are and they're very three-dimensional and especially when you have kids 
that's hard. That's really, really hard. So I was, I was a big fan of it. After I read it, I went back and read the, I did an interview with, not really an interview, I did it with the characters that Angie wrote their answers. Mm -hmm. And when I was talking to Beck, I asked if, um, after, because this, the interview happens after the book is over, it is a sequel to Resonant. Um, I asked if she felt like she could take a breath now and let someone else be brave. And she, he wrote, I don't think bravery is something you can turn off and on. I never thought of myself as brave. You see something that needs to get done and you do it. And that just kind of like really informed my read this time more than it did the first time because this didn't exist then. I was like, damn, mm-hmm. that's a really good way. Like she, she does what she has to. It's not like being yeah. brave. She like has to protect her family and like has yeah. to stop the mall. Ma, ma. Mall is ma. the big, the big one. Like she has to like stop this <clears throat> behemoth and just goes for it. I love when she's like in that cart and she's like yelling back at him. And then she's like, I'm coming back for you. I'm like, I'd be fucking scared. Also, I love Fern. Fern is my favorite character. Definitely. And for those who don't know who Fern is, it is mentioned in the interview. In our interview. And we got to actually, after cameras were off, or well, after we stopped recording, we got to meet the real life Fern. Who's yeah. Like Fern, but yeah. I what I loved about the interview, he's just like everything he has to say is just fantastic. Especially talking about how characters developed and yeah, his heart and how much heart he puts into characters. I really something I loved about Resonant is family and how you see the changes um in each character as it goes along, but finding that like strength and bravery because it's kind of like a situation. That's what has to happen. And you imagine like post-apocalyptic, there's plenty of fucking trauma, I'm guessing. I We're not there yet. And watching these characters do what needs to be done, uh, you've got an orgy behind you, Dan. So even mm-hmm. the characters who are having an orgy, yeah, like you just, I don't know if you know, there's a giant orgy happening behind you. That what the characters chose to do that to save themselves from the wave and then indulge why are they making those choices like at that point in your life after the apocalypse you're probably just like i just need to feel something other than terror and thinking about ideas like that why do people do what they do and yeah, i think it's one of my favorite um vault titles for sure oh yeah, yeah. i think this was actually one of mm, i it, i think it was one of it was the first full like volume one volume two trade paperback that i ever read from vaults like and if i i remember very specifically i was camping i was an, on an island in the puget sound which had no wi-fi or anything and i was reading it um one of those things where i was like well i guess i'm safe but also i don't know the people i'm camping with so this is stressful but yeah it was a it was a great setting to read it and then i also left because I had extra copies I left my trade paperbacks in the little free library and that's actually what started my whole like little free library thing they are in on in a little little free library on an island uh in the Puget Sound which I think is hilarious now in retrospect it's perfect yeah it's a good one and it's now obviously as we mentioned in the last episode it's going to be made into a tv show which was a very big announcement that was made a few months ago now um but that's very exciting and i love that the fear a lot of the fear in this story comes from other people like you're scared of what other people are doing and what their motivations and their intentions are and that's always it's not it's not a bunch of zombies really like there's the wave there's a lot going on but still the most terrifying it's our own situation nature. it's human it's still human nature yeah and i it's ter- yeah it's kind of i mean and there's weird church culty stuff and yeah. children being married off to each other and let me tell you a story oh i, I love story stories okay so oh, the orgy behind me this yes. scene um way back when i first read it i was talking to tim daniels um who is a close friend of mine and he told me something about this scene 
And today I was like, ah, I want to talk about it, but I don't know if it, I don't remember if I'm remembering this wrong or not. So I called him up. I said, Tim, do you have 30 seconds? Uh, we talked for an hour on the phone. Um, so this scene behind me, David, this wasn't in the, the thing. Uh, David was like, I don't know what to do in the scene. And Tim was like, I don't know. Throw like, they, what, like the, it brings out your innermost, like the wave brings out like your innermost desire and all that kind of stuff, like the, that stuff. He goes, people are going to be fucking. And Dave was like, I don't want to write anything like that. Like I'm too nervous to do that kind of stuff. And Tim was like, then let the artist do it. Just write what you think should be happening here and let them go at it. So uh, Tim said it was something along the lines of sexy time here. So <laughs> all of this is Skylar. Like this, like nice. this all just happened. I, uh, I think my favorite thing about this book is, I mean, I love the story, but I love the, the art, art because I think part volume one and part volume two are parts because they both have different artists and they both bring a different vibe. The first one is a little bit more sharp. Like most of it deals with like the island, which is a very visceral and aggressive, violent um, time. And that's when yeah. we meet Maul. And I think we meet Maul at the end and he's like in the back. You don't really get to see much of him. And the design kind of changes between volumes, but he's just like in the background chilling this giant like beast but then you have scenes like um, the island. Is it Miki? Is that uh, yeah, name? Mickey M I K I? Yeah, like I, I always pro things. I pronounce it Mickey Mikey in my head, something like that. You're I mean you're probably right either way, but like the that scene in volume two, it like DB. I if you like watch this, tell us how you pronounce the name. <laughs> I feel like there's more emotion in volume two in my in like it's more yeah. dependent upon like feelings. I will say, it, like, that that abandoned church with, that they go to, like, it is just visually such a stunning scene. Yeah. And, like, I just loved that. Like, just everything else aside, it's just visually beautiful. And it's such a break in, like, feels almost peaceful, even though they're, you know, like, looking at the amount of bullets they have and shit. Like, I think it's, like, this very weird peaceful moment, too. And I felt like you could really feel that. And also similarly with the spiral, like there's the moments like when you're like approaching it, but then also when they're like flying off of it. Um, yes. It's just really, I was just like, I don't know, it's very like, it's amazing what an artist can do. I, to, till the day I die, will just always be in awe of artists because of this, but like it evokes so much. And I agree with you though. Like it is such a, there is a huge juxtaposition between the art in the first volume and then in the second volume. And I I don't have a preference necessarily. I feel like the first volume really sets up like the danger and the threat level. And then I think that the second volume does have just, it's, it's just really gorgeous and there's a lot of serenity to it, but also there is this underlying fear at the same time. It's like a season one and a season two, like, a good season one setup into season two where there are changes made, but it still makes sense. And I want to go like back Felicity to the church. Felicity when she cuts her hair. So the first season is exactly longer is. and then she cuts her hair. I have a thing for abandoned churches as well. Like there's some really weird piece. Like I will, I go out into places and I'm one of those like rural she explorers. She says from a gra graveyard. Yeah, this is actually a picture from like an old abandoned graveyard that I took in um, Upper Michigan Peninsula. It's just on brand for you. Yeah, yeah, it's it really is. Um, But I will go and I will go into like abandoned old churches and wander around and take photos. Um, I'm not saying I'm trespassing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not doing that. That's not actually what I'm doing. That's uh -uh. God's house. It's not but trespassing. exactly. Yeah, God told me I could be there. You're one of God's children. Mm -hmm. You're always welcome. Uh, Mall Mall demon groups. yeah no uh what yeah no i'm a demon i'm allowed to be there right um so i yeah i find a lot of peace in those old abandoned places where there's a history there and people found something and it's not meant to be a commentary on religion but they found some sort of peace and some sort of hope they could have been absolute shithead people in real life i don't know but there's something about the energy of an old abandoned church that is kind of 
magical where it's like that's where you're going to find peace and in this story how it's used is just perfect um that's what i got about churches yeah i I have not trespassed on any church grounds ever not that any police are listening to this but no they're not doing crime is cool a cab cheers (laughs) geek crashers as a brand has very strong stances on like a couple things. A cab, um, Ronald Reagan is the biggest piece of shit ever, and he should have died a lot earlier. Throat goat and, and a couple other things. Uh, but resonant. Uh, one scene that like has stuck with me since I read it is when they're on the beach, and I can't remember the bad guy's name. The guy with the mustache who like basically captured everyone on the island. Hon- Hondo? Hondo. Hondo. Honcho. So, Honcho. 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 So Honcho. Honcho. They like beat him and. And I was like, me, I, I can't murder him. And then he, they're like, they're arguing back and forth about like, um, they're like, there's just surviving. No one gives a shit about you. Um, eventually the ways are going to get everyone. And Hancho goes, if I may interdict. And Mikey, Mikey, Mickey, I'm going to say Mickey. Mickey Mick- goes, no, you may. Oh, fuck Mickey, it, you're uh, so fine. No, you fucking may not. And just kills him. I was like, that fucking rules. He doesn't Good. kill him. He blinds him. Does he? He, oh, he, blinds blind. him. he stabs him in the face, which is even cooler. Wait, did he have an off-camera death? Is that what Probably. happened? Probably, yeah. We yes. don't know. We never go back to the we know, Yeah, and you know, we don't need to. Yeah, fuck that guy. There you go. I'm um, still here. You're still Rough. on the beach? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He yeah, never I'm, left. I'm in a cemetery. Dan's at an orgy. It's very Living much, um, this is very much on brand for all three of us. Yeah. So do we have any final thoughts about Resonant? Because I feel like if you don't want to read this by this time, what is wrong with you? I think... Not to, not so, to attack our audiences. If you think about what Resonant is and how that that was the first book he did with Walt. Um, yeah. And the fact that it was picked up for a show... And he's still like, he's writing more with Vault. And there's other big news, uh, stuff that we couldn't put in the interview or keep in the interview. But he's got yeah. a lot that's coming up and he's not stopping. So he's if you a have, star on the rise. He, he's so fucking cool. He's with his just chickens. the coolest. Like, he's, he's the just, coolest. He's so cool. And he's, he's all I want to do is go and hang out with him. Yeah. Like, I want to grab a beer with DB. I'm hoping he comes to Emerald City because I would love nothing more than to like hang out with him. Yeah. He, he better. But I will say with Resonant, I think everyone, that's a really good starting point. If someone was like, what vault book should I start with? I'm oh, probably yeah, going to, right. Resonant is probably going to be funny. the first when thing I out worked, of my mouth. When I was at the vault booth at Emerald City, that was a, one of the number one uh, like suggestions I would give. I'd be like, well, bar- I would do Barbaric. I would do Resonant. And then I would also do Witch Blood because. That's your, I, that's I, your baby. That's like, my that's, baby. Witch Blood yeah. fucking rules. Yeah. yeah. I will, I will, I will, I will read anything that Matthew Ehrman puts out. Like Uh legitimately, if he just wrote a grocery list, I'd be like, yeah, (laughs) is your wife (laughs) illustrating it? Let's do it. They're going to have the coolest kid ever. They are. Their kid, their kid has been born. Congratulations. You guys don't watch this, but congratulations. Yeah, no. Congratulations. 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 You don't watch this. We are very excited for you. We will buy everything you ever put out. Um, I want that grocery yeah. list. Her I know, right? Rules too. Like, it's not just like he's a great writer. He's like a really nice dude. I like, want to. I want to meet him. So, um, Dan is in an end after end. Who wants to start? It, you do, because I'm losing my voice. So okay, I need to start. I need to save my voice now. So, end after end is, um, it's a fantasy uh, in the fantasy genre, and. <laughs> Essentially what happens is somebody who has an unremarkable life, uh, Walter, he dies. And that's like instant. And he, he shows opens he, with him getting hit by a train. Like it's like bus. immediate. And then he is on the other side in the middle of fighting a war. Mm-hmm. What's next? Like what is the end after end? And I want to start with Dan because something that I always think about that you said to me about end after end is you're like fantasy wasn't 
I fucking hate I, like, I feel like it's sneaky fantasy. It's very yes. sneaky fantasy, but this is different for you. Yeah, it's very, it's funny. <laughs> um, you both talking to uh, the David interview is funny because he was talking about how he is more fantasy oriented and Tim keeps dragging him to horror. Yeah. I am very horror and I keep getting dragged over to fantasy. Um, and he kind of tricked him into doing this as fantasy as well. Right. I I got to read it early, and but then I had to keep it in, which is the problem because I like talking. So getting to keep it in for so long sucked, but I loved it. I I I still have two uh, two more issues to catch up on, but Sin 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 uh, I want to make sure Sinando Sinando's art is so fucking mm-hmm. good. It's beautiful. It, it's like. Ethereal. I also love the Ken- Kangas covers. They're so great. They're yes. amazing. I I love the cover series is so cool with the faces. Um, Kurt Michael Russell, one of my favorite colorists in the game, and like every time he's on a project, uh, it heightens the it heightens the art because it's like he has a very distinctive color palette that he uses, especially mm-hmm. the purple. I, I, I really like it. it I, w- I probably wouldn't go out of my way to read it if it wasn't by them because like, I would never pick up a fantasy book on my own unless someone was like, hey, you'll really like this. But I love the idea that like it's all of these different ears of people just fighting and fighting and fighting. And like, what is the point of that? Like your life was so, you, you were so absorbed into this thing because the first page is the main character on his phone falls onto the fucking train tracks and gets hit by a train. Uh, because of a bug, which doesn't look like it's the same bug from Resonant, but it has the same. Um, yeah, I've I've loved it so far, and I have to read the rest of it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. And the monsters well, are really fucking cool looking. Yeah, which is which is very important to me. It's a beautiful world, like yes, beautiful and violent. I am. Um... My first copy of End After End, no big deal, but uh, was handed to me by TV Andrew. And uh, he said, here, read it. And then I had to see him the next day. And I was just like in awe of what he did. And I was just like trying to act cool around him afterwards. And it was just, it, it, it blew my mind. I also feel like the first time I acted as your pers- doing your personal grunt work, Nikki, was that I picked <laughs> up, um, I picked up the uh, End After End Green Knight uh, cover. For you. Mm-hmm. That was and that had was it signed. Was, yeah, that was the first time that I was Nikki's bitch. Wait, Not first the time, <laughs> the first time. Not the last. The first <laughs> issue four got me because that was the issue that sort of goes back and looks at who Walt was before he died, mm-hmm. and how he sort of settled and knew he could be more, and it just wasn't happening. And something I in the interview with DB, uh, he talks about just it getting personal and just putting it out there. And that one felt so personal to me. And I don't always connect with any sort of fantasy genre on a personal Mm -hmm. level where like my heart is like, I felt that oof, like that's, I'm not going to cry. I think I cried over hot dogs during the interview. Nobody needs to see me cry again. But uh I feel like that's something about the writing there where it just takes it on a personal level and elevates it even more. And that relationship that Tim and DB have just, it's on display in the comic. And I think that's something absolutely beautiful. So I agree. Am I going to cry? No, I'm not going to cry. No, I, 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 I will always though, I will always read anything that is the, that features the bromance of Andrea and Daniel. Such a bromance. It's beautiful. I love watching them. If you don't follow both of them on Twitter. Oh my God, they're so cute. They're adorable. I they're feel like I'm part of it and, and I, I'm in no way a part of it, but like, they're just, there's so much love and respect there and it's amazing. No, what yes. I want to do is I want to talk about Denizen. Because- Denizen's my shit. That's what I love. It starts in a moment where you're like, this is not going to end well. It was instantly horrifying. And when they were teasing it, like on social media and the work that uh, Chris Sheehan did for it, it wasn't, it didn't start there. It started with like shots of the RV and Joshua Tree National Park. Oh God, they really captured that too. It it was brilliant. Um, 
Oh my God. I loved it. And, and, but that first page of just like the first couple of pages of dread, I'm like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. This is not going to end well. And I yeah. love it when that's what I get right when, like when I, I am also, uncomfortable. I also it. just love a shot. That's just like darkness and a few creepy faces. God. The, um, the thing that got me most about Den- uh, Denizen is how uh, it's based so, off of your life. No, you so instantly fall in love with the characters because, yeah. like, there's this, this this stepdad who's like really he's doing loves, his best. Yeah, loves his mom. Like, he's like really being patient, and they're all like, it's a very well written scene of people at different places of caring about one another. Mm-hmm. in a tight confined space um i think that's why it was it worked so well for me because it was like hmm these characters are really believable i don't want anything bad to happen to them which it will and they because do it's a, a horror few. story yeah but they like set up like your that dynamic so quickly and like the it's it you know family dynamics are super layered and they do it really quickly which is impressive to me and then she and oof. seriously the, the, the hands oh god oh god the hands were so creepy i do want to talk about um there is one page that stuck out to me and i wanted to write about it i just didn't have time last year so there's a scene where i can't remember the daughter's name but she has a broken bottle and someone comes up and he goes broken glass really can't be broken once it's made Mm -hmm. you can crush it into a million pieces heat it and remake it into something else an infinite number of times a bottle becomes a vase a vase becomes a window and a window becomes a view destroy something old make something new nothing can ever be destroyed things can only go through change i think that is going to be the main theme through the horror is the change and like so Cemeterian is clearly about faith and to a lot of horror finds its root in either faith or change. And the reasons being is that those are things that we're all afraid of. You go to God, you go to religion because you are afraid of death. You need some sort of faith that something better is out there. And when the thing you trust and you believe changes and it is ripped away from you and your reality is like the thing that I believed in so much is not real. So the belief there is just like, oh, that's where the horror comes from because your beliefs are being betrayed. But with Denizen, it's about, I personally, I believe it is about the change. Like we see what's happening to the mom and it's just like, it's not destroyed. It just becomes something different. Like their family dynamic, like they're trying to get used to this and they're trying to like, the dad's trying his very best, but like the kid's not there yet because he hasn't gone through that transformation of change. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I think it was so powerful for me. Like I thought it was such a really well written um, thing. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I have not read issue two yet. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I do have it. I just haven't read it yet. But the one thing I did want to talk about, and I don't know if do you know about the Easter egg in the middle part of the issue, the concessions? No, I don't. No. Okay. So tell recently, us, Dan. Recently, Daniel Krauss wrote a book called the ghost that ate us hold on let me see if i can get it on the count that's the one that tim did the cover for right correct Mm -hmm. let me show you Uh... nope not blur turning it off so you can see me so the ghost that ate us Mm -hmm. cool check out that little hamburger now on oh hold on i'll show you again Mm -hmm. and then i'll show you this too the little oh shit let me see if you can see that it is on there as well. They sent, when I reviewed the book, they sent me a little stress ball with the hamburger on it. Um, the hamburger is in the concessions page. So the intermission, <laughs> that's the hamburger from this burger oh, chain. that's cool. I love that. While I, I have it. this book up, fucking rules. Daniel Krause, who wrote um, the Cemetery, he also wrote the autumnal, right? Yeah. Um. He wrote this book. It is called The Ghost That Ate Us. It is about a. It's about a murder in a small town, at a burger chain. Um. It is written as if it is him going to investigate it, as if it is real. 
Ooh, I like that. Being that I read it before it came out to interview him about it, I didn't realize it wasn't real. So I did the interview and I was like, and on air, I was like, Daniel, this isn't real. And he was, no. <laughs> like, there's like Twitter, there's like, he he builds maps. He does all of this. Um, it is from, <laughs> let me just, let me just rein this in before I tell you the name of the press. <clears throat> Raw dog screaming. Yeah, I knew. I knew yeah, uh, it is really worth picking up. I know this is the Andrew episode, but Krause's prose. I don't read prose because it hurts my brain because I can't remember things. But fucking rules. It is a really good book. It's a quick read. Um, and if you, I'm I have a weird fascination with um, Burger Chain's histories and stuff like that. I don't know if he's here, but I've I have like four grimaces in this room. Um, great. It's a nice. great, ah, it's awesome. So if you're looking for more weird horror, hundred percent, pick it up. We yeah, love weird horror. Drag. There's other I... ones in there, but I haven't found them yet. I love it. I love um, Easter eggs. I... I do too. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a, a big, a big goob when it comes to the Easter eggs. Aren't, oh, okay. We'll talk about it for the next episode. Yeah, yeah. talk about it. For the also, the Cemetery is about boners, so boners. you want to read that. I'm not wrong. <laughs> Oops. That's the Vault Crashers After Dark episode. So yes, so we have some, um, so there's amazing things that DB is doing both in and out of Vault, but like resonant, end after end. <laughs> Sorry, Tennyson. <laughs> It's it's all so good, and if it there's something for everyone, I feel like really like there's stuff that is very fantastical, but there's also things that feel very possible, which it makes it creepier. The Andrew verse is my favorite verse. Um, mm, and, yeah, I love it. The Andrew verse. Let's. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what I want. Like I want a whole. I, I've, I feel like I've been calling yeah. it the Andrew verse since we decided to do this. On that, I feel like there's a lot coming. There's there's not a lot of like big news, but there's a lot of content coming out for Vault right now. And I'm very excited about all of it. And I feel like we should talk about what's coming out. We have we've read two things that are coming. Yes. Do you want to start with Godfell? Well, I I'm gonna be real, like the nasty, I'm obsessed. I am so okay. obsessed, obsessed with the nasty with it, right yeah. now. Oh man, I read it last night. It was so good. Um, so fucking good. So it doesn't come out till March, but uh, you can you can pre order it. I I believe I have it. Um, you by February twentieth. Um, let me tell you, it's amazing, and it's everything I wanted it to be concept and the characters that were created amazing i also love like we were talking about this because i was also re watching banshees of insurance and like british swearing makes me so happy <laughs> like just like the british house like my husband and i were talking in irish accents for a while and then i'm like reading the nasty and i'm just like god shite i just want to say shite all the time <laughs> shit. <clears throat> so yeah um, I'm very excited about it. I, this is not to say I'm not excited about everything else, but like this surprised me. Like Dan, I knew you were on board um, from the get from the word go, but like reading it last night, wow! Like holy shit! Fucking rules! Fucking rules! Fucking I didn't rules! Even, I didn't even like <clears throat> look to see what it was. I was just like, I'm reading this right now, and I absolutely loved it i'm like okay what's next i was like ready to go oh my god yeah like, like the first issue doesn't even come out till march and i'm like wait yeah we're so spoiled Shit. um no <laughs> I gotta and then, but and then like visually i have not like the the opening page of Godfell. i'm just like fuck like uh, one of the coolest one of the coolest like characters i've seen in a long time where i'm just like you're invincible you feel invincible to me like i love this i want to see what you can do but like visually just the concept of a god presumably we don't know who knows um falling and just what what do we do with that like what level of you know like does does how does life continue on at that point like what what does that do to our 
to our makeup, to our, our psyches. And that was a really, I, the concept itself was like just fascinating to me, but also I didn't expect so to be so visually just like, fuck. Like that was kind of like, I looked at that first panel. I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm going to have to unpack this for a while. Um, before like I continue on, uh, so good. Um, but like, yeah, the nasty was like a really fun surprise for me. And it's just, it's also just a really fun concept too. And, but I'm very, I'm just very excited for everything that's coming out. So who wants sure. to talk about what's, what all, what, what came out in December? Cause we did not record in December because December is December. It just had its way. It just fucked everybody. <laughs> like just... All right. Well, West of Sundown number seven uh, yeah. and uh, West... Door to Door Night by Night number two were released in December as yeah. well. Uh, so go pick those up. And yeah, go. Go get them. Right now. Except wait. Pa- just wait till the end. And then. Yeah, go... wait till the end. Like, pause. Pick them up. And then yeah. there are quite a few things coming out in January of note. Um, yeah. I'm... <clears throat> we do have. Let's see. Mindset. Let's talk about the. What, do you want to go through all the one uh, the things that are coming out on the eleventh? Because there's a shit ton. Yeah. So we have end after end the fifth issue, mm-hmm. and then we have mindset the final issue. Um, mm-hmm. very excited about that one. Oh, I can't like I cannot wait. I know, I know. And also, Vault is doing a whatnot stream on the eleventh as well. And I believe Kaplan and I don't know if Pearson's coming, but like I know Kaplan's going to be there, so that's going to be really really fun. I, and uh, I feel like there'll be some cool mindset stuff going on. And is that all that's coming out on the 11th? Um, that's, um, yes, that's all that's coming out on the 11th, but we do have like a few FOC dates that mm-hmm. I highly recommend ordering things ahead of time because sometimes, sometimes they will not have it if you do not order it. So we have Fearscape Volume 2. It's going to be released on the 15th, but the end date that you can order by is the 16th. So if you like Fearscape Volume 1, you want to see what happens? It releases in February. Make sure you order it by the 16th. So by when the 16th. you're there on the, like, when you're there On the 11th, up, just order. Just, yeah, just, just or- order just it. Them. Let them know. Yeah, And then uh god fell that the order by date is the 23rd the nasty the order by date is the 20th of february so you've got all of those but then on the 18th dan so much is coming out want to tell us what's coming out yes on the wow holy shit the 18th is packed so <laughs> i know we've got the january is amazing i love that i love january barbaric trade paperback number one and two and those, that means they are floppy rather than hardcover because Barbaric is only in hardcover currently. Barbaric Hell to Pay starts on the 18th. And get the fucking drum rolls ready. After beyond a while to wait for Giga to return the 18th as well. I'm so fucking excited. Um, Pack of the Dell rules. And I'm so excited to see that finally come back. Nightfall double feature number two comes out on the 18th. West of Sundown, 18 as well. Number eight on the 18th. Um, I'm gonna do you want to say what comes out on the yeah, first of I'll February? do yeah. On the first of February, I talked about it earlier bonding, a love story about people and their parasites. There will be a Matthew Ehrman interview. Maybe I will steal it from Dan, maybe I won't. We don't know yet. But either way, um, that will be coming out. It's wonderful, guys. It's beautiful. It's so fun. Um, And then Door to Door, Night by Night, number three, will be coming out on the 15th. We'll obviously be back actually later this month um, to talk about Barbaric. And we're going to do a whole Barbaric episode. um, And that's really exciting. And we'll probably talk a little, we'll talk a lot more about all this stuff that's coming out. And then a, lo- a lot more about like what's going to happen in February. But uh, yeah, some some things are coming to an end. Some things are just beginning. And it's it feels like a really great time to be alive. And if you like Vault, because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of cool announcements coming as well. Yeah, the um, anniversary of Whatnot, uh, the Whatnot Vault stream also is going to be in February, which is really cool. Uh, the things. beginning of so much. And I, I hear that, 
I hear that there's going to be an amazing, um, an amazing stream in January that you're already working on, Dan. What? Oh, it... yeah. what the hell? <laughs> yeah, uh, Gate Crashers and Vault's uh, charity fundraiser that I started last year. I decided I wanted to raise money for the LGBTQIA plus community. And I reached out to you. Vault and mm-hmm. I was like, hey, um, you want to team up? And they were like, yes. So pretty much last year was a lot of me making a lot of phone calls um, and us getting a ton of stuff. Not uh, We got a good amount of stuff, but it was only done like a month and we raised over a grand. You guys did cool, amazing but- for the amount of time you took. To do so it. Like... next this year will be um we're starting to play in january so it's not just me texting all of, all of my friends be like hey can you uh send us some stuff um but very thankful to becky clune and michael conrad who showed up last year steve orlando who sent a fucking box of stuff um and yeah. a lot more people who helped us out with that i did want to put in some thoughts about godfell and yeah um do it. The nasty real quick, just because yeah, for sure. God will. I'm the opposite of you. Like I was not excited for this one because it was like, oh, a fantasy book. The second page is what got me because of the colors. It like goes through a rainbow of colors. And it's like, oh, this that, fucking rules. with like the five, the five yes. panel piece. Mm-hmm. That was so stunning. Oh my God. A, and it's oh, a super God. interesting concept. I have um, I don't think I've read anything from uh Chris Sabella, but it's I, I'm gonna have to find stuff now because I've got to wait. Yeah. God fell rules, and then I was gonna love. I was gonna love the nasty. You no knew, matter what. Yeah, the nasty we're gonna always it's love. A, it's about video nasties and like that. Uh, the UK's history with that, um, so interesting to me. And putting a book that revolves around that is such a cool thing. They're also doing in so Adam Cahoon is designing in universe movies. So yeah. there's like, they did like 30 in a week or something. I can't remember what the number was. Um, but Adam uh, designed Nikki's logo for her other show. He is doing his first cover for the Nasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is his first comic cover ever. So make sure you're getting that cover because I got to get, got to get my boys back. But it, yeah, like, Adam is great. Like, Adam is amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's so that, awesome. He did every poster on the wall. He designed... Like they they thought up concepts him and John like it is it is a love letter to he, horror. He posted that on Twitter the other day, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah. Okay. I thought I saw that. It rules. It the, was stunning. The, oh, the, and the colorings by Kurt, who again I love, just the the shading on um, the nasty like ah, oh, God, I'm so excited for this book to come out and be able to read it. Um. So we still don't know how we're ending this. No, we never know how we Um, end it. We just kind of have some fucking chaos. uh, It's nice to see you all. And I'm just going to say, Nikki, fuck you for making me read so much when you knew my throat hurt. What? I did not. You just kept reading. No. Fight. Fight. we... No, you know I love you. You know I love you. You you want me to trample you and I'm going to put proof of that right here yeah I and really this is where the proof me. this is the proof of me wanting to be trampled by werewolf you this is probably a good point to just end the episode should i hit stop everything recording? yeah all good. right i think that's a good spot this is a good yeah witchy witchy shit tips yeah. and <laughs> what the fuck is this episode nipples, about i'm gonna hit stop nipples, recording nipples 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 I don't know. I just want to die. Okay. I'm going to hit stop recording, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I am wearing a a pit bull shirt. Not not the singer. Like an actual dog. Um, Mr. Worldwide! Mr. Worldwide! (laughs) Damn it. Shellfish allergy. I'm sorry. Did you call him daddy? Yeah. Is he your daddy? Your daddy? (laughs) Daddy. He's my dad. I'm Andrew. It's still in my throat. This is the worst part. It's like, it's just lingering in my throat.